So it looks like that Moody's has revised their housing market outlook, and it's worse than it was before. So welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns, or Churns, or Crashes and Burns. Randy Patrick here, putting the realism back in real estate. Today is September the 26th. The month is almost over. Can you believe it? Hope you're doing well. Yes, we have a hurricane barreling down upon us in Florida. Should get here sometime Wednesday. We'll have to keep our uh, eyes peeled and track that baby as it gets closer to landfall. This video is brought to you by our friends at whereforeclosure.com. If you want to check out the distressed property listings in your backyard, your neck of the woods, go to gethousingdata.com. That's gethousingdata.com. That's my affiliate link. Check it out for all the distressed properties, again, in your backyard. All right, let's move forward here. So a couple of weeks ago, talked about um, you know what what Moody's had to say, and I want to point out that you know where we are now is you got Moody's, Goldman Sachs, Fitch Ratings all talking about home price declines, home price devaluation across the board. So as for, you know earlier in January was home price appreciation. Now we've done a full 180, and people are talking correction crash. Not me. We're talking you know the actual you know uh, you know economists, analysts. Wall Street people talking about a housing crash. So there you go. So that was 210 uh, markets, about a 10 to 20, 15 to 20 percent. Well, now these 210 markets are now vulnerable to a 20 to 25 percent price decline. Finds Moody's downgrade, the latest downgrade they're talking about here. So this is interesting. So they were talking about a peak to fall or to trough about five to 10 percent across the board nationally in significantly overvalued housing markets. Um, the drop is now 10 to 15 percent. Uh, if a recession hits, Moody's analytics, analytics expect the U.S. home price decline to widen to 10 to 15 percent across the board and drop to 20 to 25 percent in significantly overvalued housing markets. So, if a recession hits, that's the kind of their, I guess, caveat. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're in a recession or one's coming. Basically, all the boxes have been checked off. With respect to what you know, I guess you could define a recession. So it's coming. So we're looking at these overvalued markets dropping 20 to 25 percent, which is pretty interesting. So when we take a look at the heat map, I mean, you've got the yellow, which is you know zero or less. The sort of pink is zero to 25 percent. The blue is 25 percent or greater. <clears throat> so essentially, you know, we're seeing lots of pink, uh, lots of blue, and very little yellow. So essentially, what they're saying is. This is the assessment for 400 regional markets. So pretty much the majority of where people live are overvalued. I guess we have to appreciate that now and get it. So yeah, we're, we're, we're in a bubble. We've been in the bubble. The bubble's here. The bubble's bursting. We're moving into crash territory now. So when you take a look at the blue, what do I see? I see Pacific Northwest. I see the Idaho area. I see Utah. I see part of California, Phoenix, like you know, Arizona, Nevada. I see areas in Texas. I see areas... You know, in the Midwest, the Oklahoma areas, I see Florida, I see coastal stuff, North, uh, Georgia, I see South Carolina, I see North Carolina, you know what I mean? You see Tennessee uh, states, so a lot of stuff going on, and obviously Michigan areas, like just pockets of this uh, everywhere. So essentially, we've got a lot of overvalued markets. Now, 20 to 25% is a nice downgrade with respect to home price declines makes it more affordable but when we're up you know 60 percent you know where we were you know the beginning i mean you know it's just it's you know it's not getting us down to 2006 levels but it certainly is giving us some relief which is i think what we need but the point here is when you look at the heat map okay overvalued or undervalued pretty much everything is overvalued uh in 2022 again according to moody's analytics you can check this out go to fortune.com and see it and read it for yourself. So interesting enough, that's how I kind of look at it. And again, I'm not saying this, I'm just reading what they're putting out there. So this is what's going on. So essentially, um, you know, uh, the first quarter we had 183 of, 400, of the nation's 413 largest markets that were overvalued by more than 25%. Now that 183 has gone up to 210. So essentially, you know, we're moving forward with overvalue and typically when things are overvalued, well, they got to correct, and they got to they got to crash a little bit to, to bring us back down to what's going to make sense. So we're seeing more in the south, more in the Sun Belt now. Obviously, West Coast has a lot of booming stuff going on there, and and you know the mountain areas, etc. But now we're sort of seeing it permeate different parts of the country as being overvalued. 
So um, this home price correction, of course, has already started. It's hitting two groups the hardest. The first is the frothy market. So we all know that we like that word frothy, right? Go, that takes me back to the first housing uh, crash and crisis when uh, Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke were talking about froth and markets, nothing to be worried about, and we all know how that played out, right? So the frothy markets include like the Austins, the Boises, you know, et cetera, Denver's, Phoenix, et cetera, um, you know, work from home buyers, uh, et cetera. Second group are, they're looking at is, you know, high tech, you know, high cost tech hubs like Seattle, San Fran, San Jose. So it's almost like they say we got a one, you know, the tech hubs can be hit with a double whammy as having some pullback in the tech hubs and, and real estate in those areas. So uh, when will these housing markets bottom out? Well, according to the chief economist, Mark Zandi at Moody's, it could, take, it could take another 12 to 18 months before this home price appreciation or sorry, home price correction concludes. So, you know, that's that's a year to year and a half puts us in 20, you know, 2023, 2024, almost 2025 area. You know, I know there's a good three to five year span and how this is all going to play out here. So I'm not worried. It's happening, everybody. Uh, it's just going to take its time to sort of, you know, uh, manifest in different markets. So, again, no, you know, Moody's, Fitch, et cetera, not the only ones talking about this. U.S. home prices could plunge 20% by next summer as a housing recession kicks in, a top economist says. Basically, the U.S. housing market is in a recession already. Uh, Pantheon Macroeconomics, Ian Shepperton says. House prices are down about 5% since May and may slump another 20% by mid 2023. Federal Reserve officials have indicated that they want to correction the housing market. So, you know, the difference between the two housing markets is that we actually had a, um, we had a, a you know, a, a run up and we had a correction, crash, and crisis back in the last housing market. Obviously, the 2006, 2008, everything sort of fell apart. And we had, you know, lenders who were scrambling to cover losses. And we had the government, you know, talking about TARP, Troubled Asset Relief Program, and, you know, $700 billion in bailouts to banks. And Fannie and Freddie got one point, you know, got their own, you know, bunch of bailout money, the whole bit. It was out of control. But, but we, so everyone was trying to pick the pieces up and plug the holes and recover. Well, the difference this time around is that, as they said here, Federal Reserve officials have indicated they want a correction in the housing market. So they're, you know, they're, for lack of better words, their monetary policies and what they're doing with the interest rates are purposely creating a correction, which will lead to a crash. That's the difference. And this time around, there won't be any bailouts coming to people and corporations and banks, money institutions, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the big difference right now. They want it to crash. They want to bring it back down to normal levels where everybody first time home buyers, average people, everyday people can buy a house, which is, you know, a little different than what happened in the last housing housing uh, crash and correction here. Very interesting. So, and by the way, folks, if you appreciate the information I provide and the take and my take on the market, if you could please help my channel grow and subscribe, that'd be great. And if you are a subscriber, could you do me a favor? Try to resubscribe, hit that bell notification because I lose subscribers every day. And I know that majority of people who, I subs who are subscribed to me do not know my videos are even being posted. Simple as that. So thank you. Okay, moving on here too. This is a really cool thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, it talks about the fundamental reason house prices will fall this fall. So this is a different take. So obviously we've got you know the the hardcore numbers that we see happening. We've got the you know the the Wall Street you know analysts and economists and the you know the rating houses like Fitch and Moody's and Goldman Sachs basically saying it's going to crash and here's how much. So, so they're preparing us, right? They're preparing us for the inevitable. They're telling us up front. So we should be listening to what they're saying. Now, I know from the perspective that numbers are always, um, well, what they talk about never really, I guess you could say, they don't go out and say it's going to crash 40, 50%. They always got to hedge their bets a little bit. That's what, that's what you know, if you looked at housing as long as I have, you realize that nobody calls it exactly as it's going to happen or what they really are predicting, what they feel like. They always bring it back a little bit so that, you know, if it's wrong and, they, and you know, it doesn't happen, they don't have egg on their face and look foolish, right? Because, again, these are the analysts, these are the economists, these are the, the skilled people who have reputations on the line. I know we're going to go crash harder than that, all right, because that's what happened last housing crisis. We've got a lot of indications that it's going to be just as bad, if not worse. But this is really interesting now. So this article, again, this is Fortune magazine. i got to tell you, Fortune... Uh, is actually producing quite a lot of information with respect to realism 
in the housing market, which I didn't think they would actually do, so I gotta give hats off to them. So this is interesting concept. So the prices people expect tomorrow influence demand and supply today. So this to me is uh, is something that you know you can't analyze it, you can't quantify it, but you know it's out there. So economists say fundamental economic factors such as interest rates and household income determine housing prices. Okay, but for some unknown reason, economists don't or can't consider people's expectations for future house prices to be a fundamental factor determining current house prices, but they should. So it's kind of like, um, a, you know, like how can I put like a grassroots or a social movement that's not really taken place yet, you know, or, or, or aware of, but it's actually is sort of happening here. Economists have done a ton of research on this general idea. Unfortunately, they call a ton of different things, which is very confusing. The general idea has been called price expectations, price extrapolation, biased expectations, adaptive expectations, diagnostics, irrational exuberance, learning from prices, momentum, creating other names, okay? But the whole point is that, you know, we are saying as a society or as a group of buyers that we're not going to pay these prices anymore, that we're not going to run up the market, that we're not going to get into these bidding wars, that we're not going to overpay uh, for a piece of property and have somebody walk away with a huge amount of equity. We're saying that as a group, as a, a buyers, as a society. And what and so that, you know, as much as we're saying it, it's, it's being perceived and the notions out there. And these things can spread pretty quick. This can be, this can actually turn the tables. I mean, if you take a look at the past couple of years in completely unrelated um, fields like, you know, stock, tech, industry, um, you know, uh, film, stuff like that. You know, when something has kind of happened and it's taken a little bit of momentum and it gets on social media, everyone's talking about it, it changes perspectives, biases, and opinions, which is kind of interesting. So I kind of feel we're at that point right now. So we're basically here, the market's capitulating. We as buyers are going, we're not going to do this anymore. And now the sellers, homeowners have to react, okay? Interest rates are rising, mortgage rates topped above six, and, and they, were, they were higher again this week. And... You know, people are pulling back. I'm not going to buy. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Well, that gets discussed broadly and openly. It gets to the sellers, and the sellers and real estate agents have to figure, okay, what do we do this marketplace? Well, you know, either put your house on the market and lower the price or take it off the market or, or figure something else out, rent it, whatever. So I think that we're not even seeing, like, like my point is that we're talking or, or the rating guys are talking about these, you know, 10 to 15% across the board nationally minimum. 20 to 25 percent in overvalued markets. They're talking about this without even factoring in what we just said here about this, you know, uh, influence of the social markets uh, and and all of us pushing prices down or just being unwilling to buy, which is really cool. So that's helpful. They can't quantify that. And then, um, well, again, I guess you could say that the takeaway is that demand will continue to fall for many months, regardless of mortgage rates, because people are slowly lowering their expectations for future house price increases. So yeah, we don't think there's gonna be house price increases. We think there should be decreases. We're seeing that now. It's our expectation that there'll be lower prices and decreases. So housing demand is falling along with the expectations for house price increases in the future. So as a, as a group, as a society, if we are not, if we don't expect it, we're not gonna buy into, oh, I need to compete and bid up and jump in the housing market before I, I lose. Fear of, fear of missing out has, has basically become fear of overbuying, okay, or fear of making a bad purchase decision. That's kind of where we're at right now. So you can see how this is what's going to happen. We're lowering our expectations for the high price points. Our expectations are for lower price points. And as much as, you know, you can close your eyes and think, think, think it's going to happen, they, it actually will just because the as a reaction, we're not going to buy and, and push those prices up. Now, this is all interesting. So going with, the, as I said, that concept and the ratings guys, Still no talk of the delinquencies, the forbearances, the foreclosures. So everything, you know, if we're talking, this is why it will be worse number-wise or, 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 or value decline, de -appre you know, negative appreciation, whatever you want to call it. It'll be worse because all the discussion, all we're talking about now is, is interest rates, inventory, sellers, buyers, bidding wars. No one talks about the negative stuff. It's purposeful because this will push us over the edge. 
Why does no one talk about it? Because really, we don't like spreading bad news. That's what it boils down to. Uh, the mainstream media won't pick up on it. Um, I think it's enough. Personally, I'm satisfied that now we're talking about these decreases. Now it's open market for housing crash and housing bubble discussions. Take yourself back a year or two ago, okay? There was no discussion about that. Everything is going up and up. People like me were, were getting laughed at for, for just saying doom and gloom, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you've been through a couple of housing market cycles, you kind of understand where things are at. This is what I study. This is what I do, okay? Participated very heavily. Last housing cra uh, crash and crisis. Learned a lot. Did a lot of stuff on housing policy and learning stuff on economics and how this stuff all works. So, so I'm pretty confident where we're headed. And again, they're not talking about this aspect, this last kind of slide here. This will be the catalyst or the driving force that fully pushes the market over the edge into crash territory. There you go, folks. Um, as I mentioned, you know, back in the day, um, you know, 10 million homeowners not paying their mortgage. So somehow 10 million homeowners didn't suddenly get all forbearance plans and, and fix their problems. You know, 10 million homeowners aren't getting... Uh, loan modification to fix all their problems, okay? So there's a great big portion that's very hard to quantify of those 10 million people that are facing foreclosure and behind on mortgage payments. So, you know, that's going to manifest out. That's going to be part of the process or part of that grouping that pushes over the edge with the delinquencies, the forbearances, and the foreclosures, okay? All that's going to be lumped in. That will push us over the edge. Mark my words. All right, guys. So uh, once again, I'd like to put my uh, feelers out for people who are looking to become real estate agents in Florida here. Connect with me. I'm looking to expand for all this stuff that's going to happen. We're moving fast. We're trying to grow this and we're trying to get our hands on a lot of cool stuff. So I'm looking for agents to join my firm, not just to partner with me here. Join my firm where I can teach you and I can show you what to do. And we've got millions and millions of so much funding with buyers that we partner with. Uh, investor buyers that it's it's uh, it's ridiculous so uh, i'm looking to open up other metros across the country so if you think you're in an area that you're seeing some change let me know i'm looking for more investor buyers I'm looking for private lending partners i'm looking to do an equity fund or syndication to, we're working on tokenization of real estate assets nft crypto blockchain we're involved in that right now which is kind of cool that's what's happening in the marketplace so we're going to be on the forefront of that uh, new program is my foreclosure fortune program Jump in it now. I've got pre-sales of discount. Get in now before the masses. I can tell you that things are changing, guys. Things are changing. So um, once again, I want to thank you for the views, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Look forward to talking to you in a couple of days. Take care.